How are fractions converted to decimals and vice versa? In the most commonly used place value, the decimal system. Numbers smaller than one can be expressed as fractions called decimal fractions. In this system, the decimal fractions are expressed in terms of tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and so on. For example, for the fraction 1 half, or 1 divided by 2, the decimal fraction is 0.5, and, vice versa. The decimal fraction 0.5, or 5 slash 10 ths, is equal to 1 half. Not all fractions are so easily converted to decimals. It depends on the type of number, especially if it is an irrational or rational number. What is modus ponens? The Latin term modus ponens means mode that affirms. Or in the case of logic, stands for the rule of detachment. This rule, also known as a rule of inference, pertains to the if, then statement and forms the basis of most proofs. If P then Q, or if P is true, then the conclusion Q is true. It is often seen as the following, if P, then QP. Therefore, Q. To see this another way. P and Q, if it is raining, then there are clouds in the sky P, it is raining Q. There are clouds in the sky. There are several ways to break down the modus ponens. The argument form has two premises the if-then, or conditional claim. Or namely that P implies Q, and that P, called the antecedent of the conditional claim, is true. From these two premises it can be logically concluded that Q, called the consequent of the conditional claim, must be true as well, in other words. If the antecedent of a conditional is true, then the consequent must be true. What is an ordered pair? An ordered pair is two quantities usually written as A, B that have a significant order, thus, A, B, does not equal, B, A. Ordered pairs are used in set theory to define members in a function. Ordered pairs are also valuable in linear equations and graphing, in which the x-coordinate is the first number and the y-coordinate is the second number, or, x, y. They are used on a grid to locate a point. For more information about ordered pairs and graphs, see geometry and trigonometry. What is set theory? Set theory is the mathematical theory of sets and is associated with logic. It is also considered the study of sets, collections of objects or entities. That can be real objects or intellectual concepts, and their properties. For more about sets, see below. Under formal set theory, three primitives. 
undefined terms, are used, s, the set, i, the identity, and e, the element. Thus, the formulas sx, xe, xe mean x is a set. x is identical to y, and x is an element of y, respectively. Overall, set theory fits in with the aims of logic research. To find a single formula theory that will unify and become the basis for all of mathematics. As it turns out, sets lead directly to a vast amount of data encompassing all of modern mathematics. There are also a number of different set theories. Each having its own rules and axioms. No matter what version, set theory is not only important to mathematics and logic but also to other fields. Such as computer technology and atomic and nuclear physics. What are the foundations of mathematics? The foundations of mathematics include how to formulate and analyze the language. You have to speak the right mathematical language to make meaningful mathematical statements, axioms. A statement accepted as true without proof, and developing logical methods in all mathematical studies. The most basic mathematical concepts in the foundations include numbers. Shapes, sets, functions, algorithms, axioms, definitions, and proofs. What does the greatest common factor mean? The greatest common factor, or GCF, sometimes called highest common factor of two whole numbers is the largest whole number that is a factor of both. Take, for example, the numbers 12 and 15, the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12, the factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. Therefore, the common factors or numbers in both lists of factors are 1 and 3, and the greatest, highest, common factor in this case is 3. There is another method used to discover the GCF. Listing the numbers prime factors, then multiplying those numbers. For example, the prime factorizations of 12 and 15 are, 2x 2x 3 equals 12 and 3x 5 equals 15. Notice that the prime numbers have 3 in common, thus, the GCF is 3. An example with larger numbers is to find the GCF of 36 and 54. Working it out by the first method. The factors of 36 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. The factors of 54 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18, 27, and 54. The greatest, or highest, common factor of both numbers is to work it out using prime factorization. The prime factorization of 36 is 2x 2x 3x 3, the prime factorization of 54 is 2x 3x 3x 3. Both these factorizations have 1 2 and 2 3s in common. Thus, we multiply those common numbers, or 2x 3x 3 equals 18.
What is the origin of the word algebra? The word algebra comes from the title of the book Algebra W. Al Mukha. Bala by Persian mathematician Muhammad ibn Musa al Khwarizmi, 783 c. 850, also seen as al Khwarizmi or al Khwarizmi. The book is roughly translated as transposition and reduction. In which he explains the basics of algebraic methods. For more information about the history of algebra, see History of Mathematics. How are decimal fractions calculated by adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing? Decimal fractions are added, subtracted, multiplied and divided much like whole numbers, but with decimal differences. The following gives some examples, adding such numbers as 0.3 plus 0.2 is simple. 0.3 plus 0.2 equals 0.5. Adding whole and decimal fractions is also easy. 2.4 plus 5 equals 7.4. These numbers are also easy to subtract. Such as 0 0.3 0 0.2 equals 0 0.1. Multiplication and division with fractions is also similar to doing so with regular numbers. Although the placement of the decimal point is all important. For example, Multiplying 24.45x 0.002 equals 0.0489, dividing the same numbers 24.45 slash 0.02 equals 12,225. It's interesting to note here a mathematical surprise, in the last example. Dividing the small numbers equaled a much larger number the opposite of what most of us would expect. What is combinatorics? Combinatorics is a branch of mathematics overall, called combinatorial mathematics that studies the enumeration, combination, and permutation of sets and the mathematical relations that involve these properties. Defined as, enumeration sets can be identified by the enumeration of their elements. In other words, determining, or counting, the set of all solutions to a given problem. Combination Combination is how to count the many different ways elements from a given set can be combined. For example, the two combinations of the four set A, B, C, D are A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D, C, D. Permutation Permutation is the rearrangement of elements of a set into a particular order. Often in a one-to-one -one correspondence. The number of permutations of a particularly sized set with n members is written as the factorial n. For example, a set with four members would have four in first place to one in the last place. This would equal 4x 3x 2x 1 equals 4, or 24, permutations of 4 members. For more information about factorials, see Algebra.
What are existence theorems? An existence theorem is one that has a statement beginning with there exist, s. Or, more generally, for all x, y, there exist, s. Existence theorems are presented in several ways, including showing the exact formulas for the solution. Describing in their proofs iteration processes how to approach the problem. And by simply deducing the solutions without showing any methods as to how it was determined. Many mathematicians do not believe in existence theorems. Stating that any theorems in which entities cannot be constructed are worthless. Other mathematicians cite the existence of such theorems but prefer to use tried and true theorems that offer specific proven methods. Are there different types of infinity in mathematics? To most of us, the universe represents infinity. But in mathematics it is the unbounded quantity that is greater than every real number. Called potential infinity in mathematics, it is the potential for infinity that exists with natural numbers because one can always conceive of a number greater than any given number. Another type of infinity in mathematics is completed infinity, which refers to the size of an infinite set, such as all the points on a line. At the end of the 19th century, German mathematician George, George, Ferdinand Ludwig Philipp Cantor 1845-1918, showed that different orders of infinity existed and that the infinity of points on a line was of a greater order than that of prime numbers. Where did the symbol for infinity originate? Infinity is represented by the symbol OO. A sign introduced by John Wallace in 1655 in his treatise De Sectionibus Conicus. Historians believe that Wallace, a classical scholar, adopted the sign from the late Roman symbol for 1,000. Whether it was from there or another source, the result was and remains, the same, a figure 8 on its side, as many people describe the infinity symbol. What is a conclusion in logic? A conclusion is a statement, proposition. Found by applying a set of logical rules, syllogisms, to a set of premises. In addition, the final statement of a proof is called the proof's conclusion. For example, in a statement that includes if, then. The result following the then in the statement is called the conclusion. What are some examples of paradoxes throughout history? The oldest paradoxes may be from the Greek Epimenides the Cretan. 
lived sometime during the 6th century BCE, who stated, all Cretans are liars. If this statement is true and any other culture you would care to put in the Cretans place then the implication is that the statement is a lie. This is also called the liar's paradox. The number of paradoxes has continued almost ad infinitum since then. Some of the more popular ones include those listed as Zeno's paradoxes. They are named after Greek philosopher Zeno of Elia, c 490 c 425 BCE. A disciple of the philosopher Parmenides, who believed that reality was an absolute, unchanging whole and Thus, that many things we take for granted, such as motion, were simply illusions. In order to defend his master's highly debated philosophy, Zeno developed his paradoxes. Most of Zeno's paradoxes are still highly debated by modern mathematicians and philosophers. Thus proving another paradox, nothing truly changes throughout history or does it? What are proper and improper fractions? The word fraction to most of us means a part of something, in mathematics, it represents a type of numeral. In most cases the quotient of two integers, with the top number called the numerator, the number of parts, and the bottom number the denominator, how many parts the whole is divided into. Written out, the numerator and denominator are separated by a slash or dash. A fraction is usually denoted by a slash b, in which a and b are whole numbers and b is not equal to zero. For the explanation of why you cannot divide by zero, see above. A rational number between zero and one can be represented by fractions, by the division of two numbers. If the quotient is less than one, such as one half or two fifths, then it is called a proper fraction. If the quotient is greater than one or, in other words, if the numerator of a fraction is larger than the denominator, such as 23 slash 7 it is called an improper fraction. What do you calculate an equivalent fraction? An equivalent fraction also called building fractions is the reverse of reducing the fraction. Instead of searching for the one in the fractional mix that you can reduce, you insert a one and build the fractions. For example, to find the equivalent fraction for one-fourth, using the number three, multiply the numerator and denominator by three, three-thirds equals one. One-fourth x three-thirds equals, one x three, slash, four x three, equals three-twelfths, therefore. The equivalent fraction in this case is one-fourth equals three-twelfths, the equal sign is used to represent equivalent fractions. What does it mean if a set is countable? If a set is countable, or denumerable, it means that it is finite. This also means that the set's members can be matched in a one-to-one -one correspondence in 
which each element in one set is matched exactly with one element in the second. And vice versa with all the natural numbers, or with a subset of the natural numbers. Mathematicians often say, A and B are in one-to-one -one correspondence, or A and B are bijective. For more about one-to-one -one correspondence, see Math Basics. In set theory, all finite sets are considered to be countable. As are all subsets of the natural numbers and integers. But sets such as real numbers, points on a line, and complex numbers are not countable. How do functions pertain to sets? A function in sets pertains to a correspondence between two sets called the domain and range. Each member of the domain has exactly one member of the range. It is often called a many-to-one, or sometimes one-to-one, -one, relation. For example, f equals 1, 2, 3, 6, 4, minus 2, 8, 0. 9, 6, is a function, with each set of numbers being an ordered pair. This is because it assigns each member of the set 1, 3, 4, 8, 9 exactly one value in the set 2, 6, minus 2, 0, 6. It never has two ordered pairs with the same x and different y values. In this case, the domain is 1, 3, 4, 8, 9, and the range is 2, 6, minus 2, 0, 6. To show an example that is not a function, f equals 1, 8, 4, 2, 3, 5, 1, 3. 6, 11, is not a function because it does not assign each member of the set exactly one value, it assigns x equals 1 to both y equals 8 and y equals 3, or it has two ordered pairs that have the same x values to two different y values, 1, 8, and 1, 3. For more information about functions, see Algebra. What is the reciprocal of a number? The reciprocal of a number is obtained when a given number is divided into one. The results are called the reciprocal of that number. For example, the reciprocal of 6 is 1 divided by 6, or 1 sixth. Reciprocals come in most handy when dividing fractions. See above to learn more about dividing fractions. What is a proof? A proof is simply the process of showing a theorem to be correct. Although the process itself might not be simple. These mathematical arguments are often quite rigorous. And they are used to demonstrate the truth of a given proposition. The result of the proved statement is a theorem. Interestingly enough, there are several computer systems now being developed to automate proofs. But some mathematicians, mostly purists,
do not believe these computer-assisted proofs are valid. They believe that only humans can understand the nuances and have the intuition needed to develop a theorem's proof. One good example is called the four-color theorem. Its proof relies on meticulous computer testing of many separate cases, all of which can't be verified by hand. What is algebra? Depending on whether one is a student or professional mathematician. The word can mean either of the following, both of which are further described elsewhere in this chapter. School algebra is what mathematicians refer to as the algebra. We learn in middle and high school and call arithmetic. But for most people, algebra means solving polynomial equations with one or more variables. The solutions to such equations are often obtained by the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, raising to a power, and extracting a root. For more information about all these operations, see Math Basics. This also includes determining the properties of functions and graphs. But mathematicians use the word algebra most often in reference to the abstract study of number systems and operations within them. Such as groups, rings, and invariant theory. This is called abstract algebra. What is algebra? Depending on whether one is a student or professional mathematician. The word can mean either of the following, both of which are further described elsewhere in this chapter. School algebra is what mathematicians refer to as the algebra. We learn in middle and high school and call arithmetic. But for most people, algebra means solving polynomial equations with one or more variables. The solutions to such equations are often obtained by the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, raising to a power, and extracting a root. For more information about all these operations, see Math Basics. This also includes determining the properties of functions and graphs. But mathematicians use the word algebra most often in reference to the abstract study of number systems and operations within them. Such as groups, rings, and invariant theory. This is called abstract algebra. How else is the word algebra used? Algebra may be defined as the subjects of arithmetic and abstract algebra, but there are other meanings. These algebras involve vectors and matrices, the algebra of real numbers, complex numbers, and quaternions, an operator or factor that changes one vector into another. There are also those exotic algebras invented by mathematicians and usually named after the inventor with the majority not truly understood except, perhaps, by their creators.
How else is the word algebra used? Algebra may be defined as the subjects of arithmetic and abstract algebra, but there are other meanings. These algebras involve vectors and matrices, the algebra of real numbers, complex numbers, and quaternions, an operator or factor that changes one vector into another. There are also those exotic algebras invented by mathematicians and usually named after. The inventor with the majority not truly understood except, perhaps, by their creators. What is an expression in mathematics? An expression in mathematics is a statement that uses either numbers, variables, or both. For example, the following are all mathematical expressions, y4645 x x74 plus 5 x, 32, x plus 4 x, 7 x, in order to write an expression from a written mathematical problem, one has to interpret the text. For example, if one person weighs 100 pounds and another weighs y pounds. The expression for their combined weights would be 100 plus y. What is an expression in mathematics? An expression in mathematics is a statement that uses either numbers, variables, or both. For example, the following are all mathematical expressions, y4645 x x74 plus 5 x, 32, x plus 4 x. 7 x, in order to write an expression from a written mathematical problem, one has to interpret the text. For example, if one person weighs 100 pounds and another weighs y pounds. The expression for their combined weights would be 100 plus y. What are equations? In its simplest form, an equation is represented by expressions written with an equal sign in between. The two entities on either side are equal to each other. They are among the simplest mathematical problems most people deal with. Most people have solved equations in their daily lives without realizing it. For example, when students first learn addition in school. They typically work on equations such as, plus 5 equals 7, in which the blank needs to be filled. This problem could also be expressed as x plus 5 equals 7, a simple equation. In this case, the equation is solved when x equals 2. The following are also equations. 6 equals 6 x equals 8 y plus 8 equals 14 x 4 equals 15 x 5 x y equals 8 x y 2 plus 4 there are also some fundamental properties of equations that are good to know. They include symmetric properties, if a equals b, then b equals a, substitution, if a equals b, then a may be replaced by b, addition, if a equals b, and c is a number. Then a plus c equals b plus c, and multiplication, 
if a equals b, and c is a number, then a x c equals b x c. What are equations? In its simplest form, an equation is represented by expressions written with an equal sign in between. The two entities on either side are equal to each other. They are among the simplest mathematical problems most people deal with. Most people have solved equations in their daily lives without realizing it. For example, when students first learn addition in school. They typically work on equations such as, plus 5 equals 7, in which the blank needs to be filled. This problem could also be expressed as x plus 5 equals 7, a simple equation. In this case, the equation is solved when x equals 2. The following are also equations. 6 equals 6x six equals 8y plus 8 equals 14x4 equals 15x5 xy equals 8xy2 plus 4 There are also some fundamental properties of equations that are good to know. They include symmetric properties, if a equals b, then b equals a, substitution, if a equals b. Then a may be replaced by b, addition, if a equals b and c is a number. Then a plus c equals b plus c, and multiplication, if a equals b, and c is a number, then a x c equals b x c. What are algebraic equations? An algebraic equation, as with the equations defined above, is a statement in which two numbers, letters, or expressions are equal. But algebraic equations take this idea even further, most of the time. The objective is to try to simplify the numbers and the one, or more, variables in the equation. These can further be defined as any combination of variables or constants linked together by any operation addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, except division by zero. This type of algebraic equation is often referred to as a polynomial. See elsewhere in this chapter for more about polynomials. What are algebraic equations? An algebraic equation, as with the equations defined above, is a statement in which two numbers, letters, or expressions are equal. But algebraic equations take this idea even further, most of the time. The objective is to try to simplify the numbers and the one, or more, variables in the equation. These can further be defined as any combination of variables or constants linked together by any operation addition. Subtraction, multiplication, division, except division by zero. This type of algebraic equation is often referred to as a polynomial. See elsewhere in this chapter for more about polynomials.
who was the first mathematician to write and solve general algebraic equations. French mathematician François Vite, 1540-1603, also known as Franciscus Vita, is often referred to as the founder of modern algebra. He was not a professional mathematician. But he contributed a great deal to the understanding and spread of modern symbolic algebra. Although some of his work paid tribute to ancient mathematical traditions. Viet created a kind of new math, it was not one based on the traditional geometric visualizations. But rather expressed as abstract formulas and general rules. But Viet still divided algebra into distinct branches partially derived from Greek mathematics. Zetetics, translating a problem into an equation. Pori's tics, proving theorems through equations, and exegetics, solving equations. He also was the first to combine algebra with geometry and trigonometry. For more about Viet, see History of Mathematics. Who was the first mathematician to write and solve general algebraic equations? French mathematician François Vite, 1540-1603, also known as Franciscus Vita, is often referred to as the founder of modern algebra. He was not a professional mathematician. But he contributed a great deal to the understanding and spread of modern symbolic algebra. Although some of his work paid tribute to ancient mathematical traditions. Viet created a kind of new math, it was not one based on the traditional geometric visualizations but rather expressed as abstract formulas and general rules. But Viet still divided algebra into distinct branches partially derived from Greek mathematics. Zetetics, translating a problem into an equation. Pori's tics, proving theorems through equations, and exegetics, solving equations. He also was the first to combine algebra with geometry and trigonometry. For more about Viet, see History of Mathematics. What are variables in algebraic equations? Variables are the symbols, usually a letter such as X or Y. Used in algebraic equations that represent an unknown number and on whose value a function, polynomial, and so on, depends. Variables remain unknown until the equation is solved, thus. They are sometimes referred to as unknowns in an algebraic equation. It is not always easy to work with variables. As there are so many letters used throughout various equations. But in many mathematical and scientific texts, there are some variables that are customary to use. What are variables in algebraic equations?
Variables are the symbols, usually a letter such as X or Y. Used in algebraic equations that represent an unknown number and on whose value a function, polynomial, and so on, depends. Variables remain unknown until the equation is solved, thus. They are sometimes referred to as unknowns in an algebraic equation. It is not always easy to work with variables. As there are so many letters used throughout various equations. But in many mathematical and scientific texts, there are some variables that are customary to use. They are listed as follows, and indicates natural numbers or integers x represents real numbers. Z stands for complex numbers what are some other terms used in dealing with algebraic equations? There are many terms in algebra, including those dealing with equations. The following lists some of the more common ones. Equality and inequality and equality is a mathematical statement that shows the equivalence of two quantities. For example, if a is equal to b, it is written as the equality a equals b. An inequality is just the opposite, a does not equal b, or a asterisk b. Formula A formula is a rule, fact, or principle expressed in terms of mathematical symbols. Including equations, equalities, identities, or inequalities. Note, the plural of formula in Latin is formulae, but it has become more readily accepted as formulas. Identity and identity is a mathematical relationship equating one quantity to Another that initially may appear to differ, it also means an equation that is always true. Such as the Pythagorean theorem, for more about identities, see below. They are listed as follows, and indicates natural numbers or integers x represents real numbers. Z stands for complex numbers what are some other terms used in dealing with algebraic equations? There are many terms in algebra, including those dealing with equations. The following lists some of the more common ones. Equality and inequality and equality is a mathematical statement that shows the equivalence of two quantities. For example, if a is equal to b, it is written as the equality a equals b. An inequality is just the opposite, a does not equal b, or a asterisk b. Formula A formula is a rule fact, or principle expressed in terms of mathematical symbols. Including equations, equalities, identities, or inequalities. Note, the plural of formula in Latin is formulae, but it has become more readily accepted as formulas. Identity and identity is a mathematical relationship equating one quantity to Another that initially may appear to differ, it also means an equation that is always true. Such as the Pythagorean theorem, for more about identities, see below. How can word problems be expressed as equations?
there seem to be a gazillion word problems out there just. Ask anyone taking such tests in grade or high school. The one thing most have in common is that they can be expressed as an equation many as algebraic equations in which there are known and unknown quantities. In almost all instances, there are keywords that lead the reader to determine not only the numbers and variables, but also what operations to use in the equation to determine the answer. How can word problems be expressed as equations? There seem to be a gazillion word problems out there just. Ask anyone taking such tests in grade or high school. The one thing most have in common is that they can be expressed as an equation many as algebraic equations in which there are known and unknown quantities. In almost all instances, there are keywords that lead the reader to determine not only the numbers and variables, but also what operations to use in the equation to determine the answer. The following lists some simple keywords and their corresponding operation. What are independent and dependent variables in algebra? Variables can be broken down into independent and dependent variables. An independent variable is a quantity that increases or decreases. Is variable or that has an infinite number of values in the same expression. For example, in the expression x2 plus y2 equals r2, x and y are variables. A dependent variable is a quantity that varies but is produced by changes in the independent variable. In other words, the dependent variable's value is dependent on the independent variable. For example, in the expression f, x, equals y, x is the independent variable and y is a dependent variable. Because y is dependent on the value of x. The following lists some simple keywords and their corresponding operation. What are independent and dependent variables in algebra? Variables can be broken down into independent and dependent variables. An independent variable is a quantity that increases or decreases. Is variable or that has an infinite number of values in the same expression. For example, in the expression x2 plus y2 equals r2, x and y are variables. A dependent variable is a quantity that varies but is produced by changes in the independent variable. In other words, the dependent variable's value is dependent on the independent variable. For example, in the expression f, x, equals y, x is the independent variable and y is a dependent variable. Because y is dependent on the value of x. How did symbols for unknowns and knowns in algebraic equations develop?
and 1591, François Vite was the first to write and solve general algebraic equations by introducing the systematic use of letters as algebraic symbols. He used vowels, A, E, I, O, U, for the unknowns and consonants. The rest of the alphabet, for the coefficients, or knowns. But it was René Descartes who introduced a new way of using letters in the alphabet in his work La Geometry. He used the letters at the end of the alphabet, X, Y, for unknowns and the beginning of the alphabet. A, B, for knowns, in many instances, these letters are italicized. This standard is still used in algebra today. How did symbols for unknowns and knowns in algebraic equations develop? And 1591, François Vite was the first to write and solve general algebraic equations by introducing the systematic use of letters as algebraic symbols. He used vowels, A, E, I, O, U, for the unknowns and consonants. The rest of the alphabet, for the coefficients, or knowns. But it was René Descartes who introduced a new way of using letters in the alphabet in his work La Geometry. He used the letters at the end of the alphabet, X, Y, for unknowns and the beginning of the alphabet. A, B, for knowns, in many instances, these letters are italicized. This standard is still used in algebra today. Are there differences between independent and dependent variables in mathematics and statistics? Yes, there are subtle differences between these two types of variables in mathematics and statistics. In mathematics, independent variables are those whose value determines the value of other variables. In statistics, they are a manipulated variable in an experiment or study whose presence or degree determines the change in the dependent variable. Dependent variables in mathematics are those variables whose value is determined by an independent variable. In statistics, they are the observed variables in an experiment or study whose changes are determined by the presence or degree of one or more independent variables. For more information about variables in statistics, see Applied Mathematics. Are there differences between independent and dependent variables in mathematics and statistics? Yes, there are subtle differences between these two types of variables in mathematics and statistics. In mathematics, independent variables are those whose value determines the value of other variables. In statistics, they are a manipulated variable in an experiment. Or study whose presence or degree determines the change in the dependent variable. 
Dependent variables in mathematics are those variables whose value is determined by an independent variable. In statistics, they are the observed variables in an experiment or study. Whose changes are determined by the presence or degree of one or more independent variables. For more information about variables in statistics, see Applied Mathematics. Are there differences between independent and dependent variables in mathematics and statistics? Yes, there are subtle differences between these two types of variables in mathematics and statistics. In mathematics, independent variables are those whose value determines the value of other variables. In statistics, they are a manipulated variable in an experiment. Or study whose presence or degree determines the change in the dependent variable. Dependent variables in mathematics are those variables whose value is determined by an independent variable. In statistics, they are the observed variables in an experiment or study. Whose changes are determined by the presence or degree of one or more independent variables. For more information about variables in statistics, see Applied Mathematics. What is intuitionism? There are some people within philosophy and mathematics who reject the formalism of mathematics and believe in intuitionism, which says that words and formulas have significance only as a reflection of the mind's activity. Intuitionists believe that a theorem is meaningful only if it represents a mental construction of a mathematical or logical entity. This is different from the classical approach that states that the existence of an entity can be proven by refuting its non-existence. For example, if you said A or B to an intuitionist, he or she believes that either A or B can be proved. But if you said, A or not A, this is not allowed. Since you cannot assume that it is always possible to either prove or disprove statement A. What are the basic set operations? There are several basic set operations, the most common being the intersection of sets, union of sets, and the complement of sets. The following lists these operations, note, the first two operations obey the associative and commutative laws, and together they obey the distributive law. Intersection The intersection of two sets is the set of elements common to the two sets. For example, the intersection of sets A and B is the set of elements common to both A and B. This is usually written as A and B. Thus, if A equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and B equals 3, 4, 5, then the intersection of A and B would be 3, 4. Union The union of sets is the combining of members of the sets. For example, the union of two sets A and B is the set obtained by combining. 
members of sets A and B. This is usually written as AUB. Thus, if A equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and B equals 3, 4, 5, then the union of A and B would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Complement or complementation when the set of all elements under consideration must be specified. It is called the universal set. And if the universal set is U equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and A equals 1, 2, 3, then the complement of A or A is the set of all elements in the universal set that are not A or 4, 5. The intersection between a set and its complement is the empty or null set. 0, the union of a set and its complement is the universal set. What are some examples of Venn diagrams? Venn diagrams are schematic illustrations used in logic theory. To show collections of sets and the relationship between them. Overlapping circles represent the sets, or the subjects and predicates in syllogistic logic. The standard way of presenting such diagrams include the intersection of two. Order 2 diagram, 2-3, two three, order 3 diagram, circles. Based on what circles intersect and the areas shaded. A conclusion about the sets may then be read directly from the diagram. Such illustrations can include the union of two sets, the intersection of two sets, the complement of a set, and the complement of the union of two sets. What are the basic symbols used to operate on sets? When set theory founder George Cantor developed the symbols for sets, he used a single horizontal overbar to denote a set with no structure besides order, thus, it represented the order type of the set. A double bar meant that there was no order from the set, which is also called the cardinal number of the set, see below. What are subjects and predicates in Aristotelian logic? In Aristotelian logic there are grammatical distinctions between a subject and a predicate. The subject is usually an individual entity, an object, house, city, man, animal, or it may be a class of entities, objects, houses, cities, men, animals. The predicate is the property or mode of existence that does or does not exist with a given subject. For example, a singular plant, subject, may or may not be blooming. Predicate, all houses, subject, may or may not have two stories, predicate. What is an expression in mathematics? An expression in mathematics is a statement that uses either numbers, variables, or both. 
For example, the following are all mathematical expressions, y4645 x x74 plus 5 x, 32, x plus 4 x. 7 x, in order to write an expression from a written mathematical problem, one has to interpret the text. For example, if one person weighs 100 pounds and another weighs y pounds. The expression for their combined weights would be 100 plus y. How else is the word algebra used? Algebra may be defined as the subjects of arithmetic and abstract algebra, but there are other meanings. These algebras involve vectors and matrices, the algebra of real numbers, complex numbers, and quaternions, an operator or factor that changes one vector into another. There are also those exotic algebras invented by mathematicians and usually named after the inventor with the majority not truly understood except, perhaps, by their creators. What are naive and axiomatic set theory? The naive set theory is not one that takes everything for granted. It is actually a branch of mathematics that attempts to formalize the nature of the set using the fewest number of independent axioms possible. But it is not the answer to formalizing sets, as it quickly leads to a number of paradoxes. Because of this, Mathematicians use a more formal theory called the axiomatic set theory, which is a version that uses axioms taken as uninterpreted rather than as formalization of pre existing truths. For more about axiomatic systems, see elsewhere in this chapter. How does one interpret sets? There are several ways to look at sets. Two sets, or more, are considered identical if, and only if, they have the same collection of objects or entities. This is a principle known as extensionality. For example, the set A, B, C is considered to be the same as set A, B, C. Of course, because the elements are the same, the set A, B, C and the set C, B, A are also the same, even though they are written in a different order. It becomes more complex when sets are elements of other sets. So it is important to note the position of the brackets. For example, the set A, B, C is distinct from the set A, B, C. Note that the brackets differ, in turn, the set A, B is an element of the set A, B, C. It is a set included between the outside brackets. Another example that shows how sets are interpreted includes the following. If B is the set of real numbers that are solutions of the equation x2 equals 9, then the set can be written as B equals x. x2 equals 9, or B is the set of all x such that x2 equals 9. Thus B is 3 minus 3.
What are variables in algebraic equations? Variables are the symbols, usually a letter such as X or Y. Used in algebraic equations that represent an unknown number and on whose value a function, polynomial, and so on, depends. Variables remain unknown until the equation is solved, thus. They are sometimes referred to as unknowns in an algebraic equation. It is not always easy to work with variables. As there are so many letters used throughout various equations. But in many mathematical and scientific texts, there are some variables that are customary to use. What is the historical basis for mathematical logic? Most mathematicians believe that systematic logic began with Aristotle's collection of works titled Organon. Tool, in which he introduced his ideas on logic. In particular, Aristotle used general forms to describe logic. Such as if all x are y, and all y are z, then all x are z. He presented three laws basic to all valid thought, the law of identity, or A is A, for example. An acorn will always yield an oak tree and nothing else, the law of contradiction, or A cannot be both A and not A. For example, an honest woman cannot be a thief, and the law of the excluded middle. Or either or, in which A must either be A or not A, for example, a dog can be brown or not brown. Interestingly, author Ayn Rand divided her novel Atlas Shrugged into three parts after these three principles as a tribute to Aristotle. What is symbolic logic? Symbolic logic, also called formal logic, is mainly concerned with the structure of reasoning. It determines the meaning and relationship of statements used to represent specific mathematical concepts and provides a means to compose proofs of statements. Symbolic logic draws most notably on set theory. It uses variables combined by operations such as not or and, and assigns symbols to them, and and, respectively. Was mathematics always based on a logical foundation? No, not all of mathematics was always based on a logical foundation. But some ancient cultures did develop certain aspects of logic in their thought. The Greeks were probably one of the first cultures to understand logic's role in mathematics and philosophy. And they studied the subject extensively. For example, geometry, as presented by Greek mathematician Euclid. C325 C270 BCE, had some foundations in logic. Greek scientist and philosopher Aristotle's, 384-322 BCE. 
rules for syllogisms were also based on logic, and he wrote the first systematic treatise on logic. But his logic works were based on ordinary language making. Them a matter of interpretation and subject to ambiguities. It was not until the development of calculus that most of mathematics was put on a logical foundation. By the 17th century, people such as German mathematician Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz 1646-1716, began to demand a more regular and symbolic way to express logic. Logic truly became a part of mathematics around the mid-19th century. Especially with the 1847 publication of English mathematician George Boole's. 1815-1864, the mathematical analysis of logic and English mathematician Augustus de Morgan's, 1806-1871, formal logic. Thus, mathematics began to encompass symbolic logic with precise rules to manipulate those symbols. See below for more about symbolic logic. Of course, nothing is perfect. Although mathematicians in the late 19th and early 20th centuries hoped it would be. They believed that all of mathematics could be described using symbolic logic and made purely formal. But in the 1930s, Austrian-American mathematician and logician Kurt Gödel, 1906-1978, put a damper on such an idea by showing that not all truths could be derived by a formal logic system. Who invented a way of analyzing syllogisms? In 1880 English logician John Venn, 1834-1923, presented a method to analyze syllogisms. Now known as Venn diagrams. Venn initially criticized such diagrams in works by his contemporaries. Especially those of English mathematicians George Boole, 1815-1864, and Augustus de Morgan, 1806 to 1871. But in 1880, Venn introduced his own, now famous, version of the diagrams in his paper on the diagrammatic and mechanical representation of prepositions and reasonings. By 1881, along with correcting Boole's work, Venn further elaborated on the diagrams in his book Symbolic Logic. Today we are most familiar with Venn diagrams in connection with understanding sets. Although Venn is credited with the diagrams, he was not the first person to use such geometric methods to represent syllogistic logic. German mathematician Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, 1646 to 1716 used such graphic representations in his work and even Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler 1707 to 1783 is known to have presented diagrams that had a definite Venish look a century before John Venn The following lists some simple keywords and their corresponding operation. What are independent and dependent variables in algebra? Variables can be broken down into independent and dependent variables. An independent variable is a quantity that increases or decreases. 
is variable, or that has an infinite number of values in the same expression. For example, in the expression x2 plus y2 equals r2, x and y are variables. A dependent variable is a quantity that varies but is produced by changes in the independent variable. In other words, the dependent variable's value is dependent on the independent variable. For example, in the expression f, x, equals y, x is the independent variable and y is a dependent variable. Because y is dependent on the value of x. What is the set theory approach to arithmetic? The set theory approach to arithmetic is defined in terms of the non-negative whole numbers 0, 1, 2, 3. These numbers are identified with specific sets based on the placement and number of brackets. For example, mathematicians identify 0 with the empty set, 1 is identified with, 2 is identified with, 3 is identified with, and so on, each bracket is an interpretation of the empty set and 1, or, How are some symbols used in operations on sets? There are many ways to operate on sets. The following lists some of the more simple operations on sets, where E, F, and G are sets. ENF equals FNEEUF equals FUE in which both are commutative operations, ENF, and G equals EN. FNG, EUF, UG equals EU, FUG, in which both are associative operations, ENF, UG equals EUG, N, FUG, EUF, NG equals ENG, U, FNG, in which both are distributive operations.